where we used to record before I got, I basically took over the room there. But when that was my mum's room, I used to just put the drum pieces here. Now I've got all the merch and t-shirts and like old amps and stuff. So the kit used to be here and Pete would stand here, we'd have to lock the door. <laughs> and then we'd have like two wires coming out of the little computer. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's changed a little bit. <laughs> Hello, we're Spring King. We all kind of got together in a bit of a roundabout way. I knew Andy from high school. Um, from that kind of time, when I was like 15. He was at the skate park, I was at the skate park. Uh, Pete, he also was, from, he was actually from my high school and uh, we used to just be playing bands together. And uh, it all started out as a bit of a solo thing for me and then I convinced Andy to get involved after Pete convinced me to start it properly because at first it was just like a studio mm -hmm. thing, just, just for a bit of fun. And then we needed a bass player so we asked James and he didn't play bass but he was so eager he just went out and got a bass, didn't you? Yeah. Me and Pete were in a band at high school as well for a bit. Just we used to just lock all the doors so then the teachers could get in, and they'd be like banging on the window, like "Let us in, you're making a racket." And we'd just keep playing, and it was, it was great. It was just I was being young. Yeah. Yeah. Our first gig as uh, this line, this lineup because yeah. we've had a couple of lineups as well. Um, it was the Castle, and that was like. Three years ago? Yeah. Three and a bit years ago. Three and a bit, yeah. We were playing at a carefully planned festival with one of my mates' bands called Barefoot Beware, but we were on at like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, it was, it was just it was insane. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was crazy. For a first show as well, it was like oh, it was cool. super packed. Yeah. It was really packed. Tiny stage, like practically on top of each other. But yeah. It was testing the walks for the first time with the new lineup as well. So it went really well, so we were like, all right, okay, it seems to work, so yeah. let's keep going. At Spring King, we met a guy called Simon Butcher, who used to work at Trough, and mm -hmm. Fallowfield, Fallow Cafe, and stuff yeah. like that. And he put us on a few times, and like he was really kind of like eager to just help us out. And then eventually we uh, met uh, Now Wave, who are like a massive Manchester promoter. They do all the, um, like Kurt Vile and stuff like that, like really cool stuff. And then there's also like DHP, who do a lot of good stuff as well we've met and we've done a few shows with. The first time I'd heard about the PRS Foundation was, I think online, on Facebook. I'd seen like Steel and Sheep had received it in the past. So I messaged our manager and I said, should we check this out? And she knew about it already, like she was well aware of PRS. So um, she actually did all the application process for us. But you know, I don't think it's out of the league of like you know, us to do it ourselves either. So if you don't have a manager, it's not like you can't do it. Um, it's actually uh, from what from what I've read of it, it's actually quite a yeah you know, a simple process. And that's what the PRS Foundation helps you do. It just says, here's some money, try it out. You know, there's no there's no danger. Like you don't have to make us back, you know, half a million pounds mm -hmm. or something. You can, here's the money. You know, we were lucky enough to get um, funding twice from the PRS Foundation. Um, the second time was the Momentum Fund, which we got last year. And that, that kind of helped us um, do a back-to-back -to -back tour. We did Spectre Tour first, and then we did a tour with Slaves. And the funding went towards that. And then also it went towards recording our album. And um, yeah, we basically, we did the album ourselves, so we just needed a studio, but we couldn't afford a studio and at the time. Um, that we couldn't record in the house, and um, there just wasn't a chance because there were so many people living here, and it was just, I was just making too much of a racket. Um, I just couldn't find the time to do that. So we went to a studio, which uh, the PRS Foundation helped us get to, and we recorded everything in three weeks. And we wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. And you know, one of the songs that's come out from that is Rectifier which is our um, last single and it also helped us fund um, a self-release uh, the Who Are You single which we did ourselves like between the four of us and our manager and you know like a distributor and stuff which we found ourselves we um, basically released a single and it you know, did, did pretty well for a self-release so we were really chuffed with that because we waited so long for our deal because we had the opportunities with PRS Foundation. We kind of, when, we, when it came to signing a deal, we signed one that we were happy with and that the label were happy with. And 
you know they they've given us a lot of flexibility and like Ireland are like so relaxed with us they just let us do whatever we want because they've seen they like they, you know they've actually said to us we've seen you over the past years like doing your thing and we have full trust that you'll make the right artistic decisions and stuff like that so you know they're, they're very like open and warm about the whole situation they're like yeah you know we'll sign you but it's really relaxed and I think that wouldn't be the same situation if we had signed two years ago and we were just desperate for some cash because um, it is really tricky for bands out there who don't have any money and they don't have any other way and they don't know about grants like the PRS foundations and stuff. Because when you think about it, no band really has any clue about any of this whatsoever. They sort of just under the impression you go and play gigs and then they get a bit bigger and then you go in more yeah. cash and that and that's it. But there's so much more to it that you just you just can't possibly foresee. Yeah. So having something like that is quite useful. I think, you know, we we applied to quite a few things that we've never yeah. received. Um uh, you know, we've never had grants back for. So we've been quite lucky. You know, but you you just gotta do it. You just gotta Start jotting down reasons yeah. why and what you need, and you know, make a little plan. Like you, you need to have like a, uh, a a bit of a business plan in mind. Like how much it's going to cost you to print your record, and how much you're going to spend on the posters and the PR. And if you're going to pay a radio plugger and all that stuff. I was going to say it's really important to have a really strong idea of where you are and where you want to be. Like because if you just apply and say, oh, well, I wanted to go to my mum's in Wales for a week, so I could really do the train fare. But if you can say, we're this kind of band, this is, and then we, we hope to release this record or do this tour, and this will take us from A to B, and then hopefully we'll go and do this kind of thing, then that's, you've got a way stronger application already. So like, it's, it, it's really a good thing to apply for once you've, like say, like, once we've had because so at the time we had a couple of strong goals already when we applied and stuff, whereas if we would have applied when we'd been a band for like three months, you don't necessarily have the same impact. The PRS for Music Foundation for us has meant we can explore and we can take our time and we can uh, develop. That's, that, for me that's like the three things that come to mind. It, may, it just reminds me of, you know, being able to just kind of do what you want, it's just like here's some paintbrushes and go do what you want in the way that that was the money for us. We could just, we could release things how we wanted it, we could go and plan a tour how we wanted it, you know, it was basically about exploration. For me it's meant creative control, uh, like Tyrex it's allowed us to work in a lot of ways that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise, mainly as well for touring, like it's helped us so much. And I feel like that's now such an important part of us, of our identity as a band. Mm. That's probably been the most beneficial thing for me.